Okay, I want you to meet my guests, the members of Skinny Puppy, Kevin Ogre and Wilhelm, and welcome. Hi. This is your first trip uh, to the eastern parts of the country? First trip out of San Mexico, actually. Yeah. Really? For performance? Yeah, down, down. For the yeah. How uh, do you think that things are going to be a little different for you here than they were out west? Uh, it'll be new. Yeah, like I said, it's the first time. It'll, it'll, it'll be a lot fresher for us, I think. I mean, you know, we've, we've played a lot in Vancouver and uh, experiencing a new audience is going to be a, a real treat for us. It's just, just getting some outside stimulus from people that don't really know what we're about, you know, as people. Things yeah. like that. Now, you did an EP before you did the album. Was that something that you produced yourselves before you were signed to Network? Um, we started yeah, actually, it, actually. Five of the songs we went in and did, and I presented it to, to them. And, and yeah, it actually all came around after we had presented the songs. So, but then the actual packaging and putting it together came We afterwards. We went and recorded one song by ourselves, Sleeping Beast. And uh, um, after that, they, they took a lot more interest in what we were doing. And uh, it just kept snowballing from there. That was the remission EP, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, Network, I think, has some of the best packaging and promotion of artists that I've ever seen in this country. It is so smart, and I like the look of it a lot. In fact, let me show the, uh, the album cover while we're at it here. There's a real consistency uh, among the four acts that they assign. Now, one of the things I'm noticing... The same artist. The same artist as the cover. Yeah, well, but they seem to be presenting it almost as a, a package deal. How, how does that affect you guys, being part of that kind of presentation from a label? No, at all. It's, it, it, it's still very separate. Yeah. You know, but there is a lot of family-like dedication from the label to the bands as well. We all work together at pushing the project further. It's an artist-artist relationship and seven artist management. There's no real management. It's more, um, it's more talking to people like, like you would, would talk to your mother or your father in a way. It's, it's, it's a very caring little, little group of people, which is great. Do you think that kind of mutual support system is necessary if you're making what we might call alternative For the independence, music? yeah, it's definitely essential. Vancouver scene, I mean, perceived obviously from the point of view of somebody who lives in the East, seems to be a real splintered kind of thing. On the one end, you have this very corporate kind of music, um, you know, Lover Boy, Headpins, that kind of thing. And then there's this group of young bands like yourselves, Grapes of Wrath, uh, Go For Three, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, why did that happen? Is that dichotomy existent, or is that just our perception of it? Um, there's, there's, a, there's, there's so many different things happening. It's just, it's just that it seems that the bands that, you, that get exposed to other parts of the country are always the ones that appeal more to the commercial audiences. But there's a really big underground scene in Vancouver. There's a lot of bands trying to get somewhere, but because of the lack of labels and the lack of... There's a lot more yeah, independent records coming out, though. It seems, yeah. seems like there seems to be a really strong move towards towards an independent type of network happening out there. Yeah. There's a few independent labels that have just opened up another side to, to the Vancouver scene as well bringing the more sort of guitar-oriented underground bands to, to visibility. Yeah. Um, we're going to play the video for uh, Smothered Hope from the Remission EP. You want to say anything about that before we play it? Oh, uh, that was a live uh, live footage from our first New York theater uh, date in uh, February. First date we ever did, actually. That was the first live date we ever did. And uh, then we compiled it after with, uh, with a guy from a local television station. Fairly low budget, but <laughs> it's fun anyway. Oh, turned out good. And yeah, yeah. Skinny Puppy, this is Smothered Hope on City Limits, and we'll be right back. from Skinny Puppy, who are my guests here on City Limits. Over, you write most of the lyrics for the band, do you? Yeah. That's a pretty bleak vision of the world that you have. Well, it's bleakness, but it's bleakness for the light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully, if people realize the bleakness is there, which is the biggest problem. <laughs> yeah. Is it anti-corporate music? Do you think people are fighting no, I, something? I, 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 I try and keep corporations as far away from my life as possible because it's caused me nothing but problems. <laughs> yeah? What yeah. kind of problems? <laughs> um, a great loss of money and a great deal of family strife in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Catering. Did you guys try and go any one of you the pop route before you were in Skinny Puppy? Did you think that maybe you could try that kind of way and then re realize you were banging your head against the wall? No, we've always been in the darkness. Yeah. Darkness is our output. One critic said that after the release of the Remission mini, mini LP, the band jumped out of the dungeon shadows and into enigmatic notoriety. <laughs> Wilhelm, does enigmatic notoriety pay the bills? I want to know. <laughs> well, at least we're doing what we like, so that's the main thing. We're pleasing ourselves as far as that's concerned. Yeah. And bills will get paid, hopefully. <laughs> do you concern yourself as to whether it's music for a lot of people? Like, do you care whether you have a broad-based appeal? Well, I think that we're just planning on, on experimenting and pleasing ourselves first, and if people can uh, understand it and 
find something to grasp onto and uh, like it, then we've accomplished something. One of the, the experimentation to us that is the is the is our goal of like it's a therapy for us too in a sense. I mean, it's uh, it's a great way of getting out aggressions which would otherwise go towards um, ever growing cancers in the body that start to grow at a young age. So if we can get it out now, hopefully we'll live longer. <laughs> See the destruction of the earth. Right? Speaking about experimentation, I noticed on the record there's a lot of uh, experimenting with tape effects, with little things going backwards and being slowed down. How did you start getting into that? Uh, just in the home. Yeah, so just in home and uh, just manipulating anything that was meant to be used properly but not used properly. Twisting knobs and EQs. To get something that sounds a little, a little different, a little, a little more you know, new to the ear instead of the same, you know, chorus pattern. You know? So it's like taking away the um, soft melodic synth line on a DX7 and putting it to a noise generator and making it sound yeah. a, a lot more abrasive. You have some dates coming up in the East. You're playing uh, tomorrow night, the 11th, at the Diamond in Toronto, a place called, is it Zinc? The Zinc Club, yeah, in, in Hall, Quebec. Quebec, right? And uh, the Fufunet Electrique in Montreal on the 17th and following that on the 20th Dalhousie University in Halifax. Uh, I want to wish you a lot of luck on the tour. Thanks. And thanks for uh, coming here to Limits. Actually, we don't usually have guests on Limits, but we had the Chocolate Bunnies from Hell earlier this year, and we thought Chocolate. the animal motif... <laughs> we should maintain the animal motif at all costs. <laughs> oh, I know I have a final question. I almost is. forgot. I mean, this being, I guess, your, your first sort of official appearance on live national TV, whence cometh the name Skinny Puppy? Holy smokes. That's a tough one. You know, I, 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 it, it just appeared, I swear. No, the first song that we did was called Canine. We based it around the, we based around the life through the, through the, the eyes of the dog. Skinny dog. We're, we're talking a little Kafka-esque reference here, are we? Uh, well, if you want to wake up and look like a vermin one day, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to. But yeah, it's, it's a little like that for sure. I mean, Joseph K's got a lot of things to experience in life, and so do we. <laughs> Thanks. Good luck on the tour. And with a new record as well. This is Skinny Puppy, far too frail on City Limits.